Hello viewers, welcome back to my channel. Today's topic of discussion is on DNS, domain name system. This is one of the application layer protocol. So this particular topic has got various subtopics here. You need to have information related to so many subtopics. But rather than moving directly uh, to the minute details, let me first give you an overview of this and then start teaching you the remaining subtopics. So overview here in, is, in a sense, like if this is the protocol DNS, what is the need for this protocol and how does it work? So to understand the working, I'll just give you one simple uh, scenario or you can tell one simple uh, uh, task which we carry out every day. See, normally in the system, when you start trying, uh, when you try to open a particular website, you type that uh, this one on the address bar www.google.com. Now, this the letters what you are typing is in English, but the system will understand what only the numbers. So, this name should get what translated to the IP address. But this system on which you are typing is not knowing the address of this. Fine. You are typing what the name of that uh, website. When you type the name, when you type that web address, it has to get translated into its IP address. But the system is not knowing about this. It is as simple as like if I am speaking in English and I want to communicate with a person who, who is knowing only German language, then I need a translator, isn't it? So whatever I speak in English, the person, the translator will try to convert that and tell to the other person in German. So the translation is required. So here is where the DNS comes into picture. So the host names are typed on your system. Fine. But this host names cannot be understood by the system. So what the DNS will do, it will convert into its or it will translate into its IP address. For example, if you are typing google.com, www.google.com, what DNS will do is it will translate this and give its IP address. Just writing randomly, it is not the IP address for www.172.16.2.1. Just assume that this is the IP address of the host name that is typed by the user. So, this conversion is required from the host name to the IP address. That is why I have written DNS system helps to resolve the host name to an address. Fine. Very simple. The definition is what? It helps to resolve the host name to an address. It is acting like a translator. It translates what the given host name that is typed by the user to an address. But now we will see how this particular system on whichever laptop, machine, desktop you are typing this, how this particular machine is getting the IP address. So for that, this system, once you type the host name, this machine will directly what immediately put this query because it needs the IP address. It will put this query to the operating system. You know that every system is what? Definitely without operating system, you are not able to operate your machine. So it will put this query to the operating system. You are typing where? You are typing on the web browser. First understand this, you are typing this host address on the web browser. Web browser will send that query to the operating system. Operating system is configured in such a manner that it will send this query to the resolver. Resolver is nothing but here the server. That is the local server provided by your internet service provider. Now, internet service provider can be anything your uh, Airtel, Geo, Idea, Reliance, so many internet service providers are there. So, the operating system will definitely what it will send this query to the resolver. Resolver is what the server okay, provided by your IP internet service provider. Now, the resolver should definitely, that means this server should have what the IP address of the google.com. So, this resolver normally it will maintain, okay, for www.flipcard.com, uh, let us assume it is having some uh, address, randomly I am writing, please remember, do not think that it is the IP address of, uh, then www.facebook.com, let me just write uh, one or two names here. This is the host name and the corresponding IP address. Okay, www.gmail.com 172. Dot, some random numbers I will take it. Okay. So, this way the all 
uh, this one what is that the uh, host name and the IP address the mapping is maintained here in the it has to be maintained definitely because first uh, it will contact the local server only that is the resolver we say but now let us see uh, one situation wherein this server is not maintaining what the IP address it is not having in its uh, database the whatever host address the client has typed here in the web browser it is not available in its database so what it will do then comes what the different servers that are there in the hierarchy the first one will be always what the root server you call it as what the root server and the next level in the hierarchy will be the top domain level server we call it as tdl and the next one in the hierarchy will be the authoritative server now i'll tell you what are the functionalities of this server why these servers are required first and foremost thing is the root server is always the top level server that server the next level of servers in that hierarchy is called as top domain level servers these servers always have what information of web addresses ending with the extension like .com, .org, .mil. So these type of uh, web addresses which are ending with the extensions like .com, .org, .mil like this you have a list. Okay, those type of information are stored in the top domain. But root server is not storing any information about what the host name and the mapping of IP address. It always have the information about all the what the servers below its level. That means all the below level servers information. How what is the hierarchy that is there in that particular complete uh, uh, domain that will be maintained by or that information will be available in the root server. We can say that it will it will it, it 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 can have what the root server can always know that if a particular web address is okay is uh, queried by a client then which server is the one which is going to have the information so that is the functionality of the root server it only maintains what references to the lower level servers servers now look here the resolver now in this case we are just assuming that the local uh, server has got like this the list of web host address and the corresponding IP address but it is not having what it is not having whatever request is made from this particular client. So what it will do is it will first this resolver okay that means this resolver it will send the request to the root server. I need what I need the IP address of this host name. Then the root server will check uh, this host name is ending with the extension .com. So it knows that it, it will be definitely present in where in the top domain level servers and it is having. So it will give what it will give the reference of what the .com server .com server. It will say that your, your query should go to what your query should go to a server which is maintaining what host names ending with the extensions .com. So now the resolver knows that okay fine I will send this query so it will start sending this request to the dot com now. So it is sending I want the IP address for this host name. Now the top domain low, uh, top domain level server has got references to the lower level servers and those servers are having the complete information that is the mapping of a host name with an IP address. So that, that that lower level servers are called as authoritative servers. So definitely this TDL server will send what the server name of what the authoritative. Then then finally, see I am just showing here. Please make it. So this one has gone from the resolver and the reply has come here to the resolver and finally now this resolver came to know that whatever address it was looking for is present in the authoritative server so it will send the query to the authoritative server. Then the authoritative server will respond with the IP address. So it will say okay your IP address is I will just write randomly it will say this is the IP address. 
so it will send this ip address to the resolver you can see here so these type of queries and response queries and re response are exchanged between what between the local server and the uh, other servers that are there in the hierarchy finally this address is obtained which address 170 this is the for for which the client was looking for then the resolver after obtaining this address will send that to the operating system then the operating system will send that address to the web browser on which you have initially typed this web address then the web browser will contact what the server that is the google.com to display the web page which you have requested so this is the complete background that is happening here in your uh, everyday see normally we say we'll type one host name and we get the web page immediately so what exactly is happening here you should know so this is how now one more thing you remember once it came to know that it is the google.com is having an ip address what it will do is see initially it was having in the database these many host name and the ip addresses now it will include okay now i got this information so i will include in my database so the local server will maintain this will come into its now cache so that next time when a request comes from the resolver it uh, when the request comes from the operating system it need not send the request to the root server fine so it will immediately refer its cache and it will see yes it is present so it will forward this to the operating system operating system will in turn forward to the web browser so this the, it means what's in uh, whatever web addresses a particular client is always or frequently referring will always be present in the isp server only something which is something very new web addresses so normally these web addresses are used by almost all users every day something very new very peculiar has come then this type of query response query response happens and that will be once again stored in the cache memory so we say this it, it is actually resolving resolving what a given name to an ip address and this type of method is called as the iterative method of what resolving we say iterative resolution you can see here i had written one of the subtopic as res resolution and we have the iterative method and the recursive method the one which i have explained here is what the iterative method recursive will be up till here it is fine it has come to the local server the local server will send the request to the root server the root server is immediately communicating with the dot com that is the top domain level server the top domain level server in turn will communicate with the authoritative server and the authoritative server will reply to the what the top domain level server and the top domain will reply to the root server the root server will send the uh, reply to the resolver so that is called as the recursive way of resolving so the so that's the reason we require here dns definitely our systems will not understand the english english language they always what they always understand the numbers and to translate a given name to a number we require the dns so this is all about what the need for dns and what the working of dns so let me complete the remaining topics also for the dns because that is what is actually important also how dns works you can definitely go with this per type of explanation and also this explanation uh, covers what the two types of resolving also one is the iterative and another is recursive but the remaining things also you should know no very very much important how are label domain name domain names generic country zone so these are the sub topics that i'll be telling you in detail in my next session hope this explanation is clear to you all thank you bye bye take care